Welcome back to Smoky Ribs. I'm Russ Jones. In today's video, I'm going to be doing some Southern favorites. We're talking about barbecue ribs. We're talking about a homemade mac and cheese that is just to die for, mixed along with some cornbread. But guess what? We're doing all this together. This is going to be a barbecue pork rib mac and cheese cornbread. Going to get started right after this. <music> We're going to start with ribs because that takes the longest and the rub I'm using this is another test rub from heaven made products this is his rib rub test one he sent me two of these test one and test two have not tried these so I told him I would and I'll give him some feedback on it all right we're going to apply this rub and by the way man it is so cool out here they finally the humidity has gone our lows went into the mid 50s last night upper 60s right now it's just beautiful not a cloud in the sky rub smells good we'll flip it over do the meat side okay there's really no need to probe the meat with a thermometer i know the telltale signs of when ribs are done but what i am doing is i'm using my eye shelf this is my iShelf Wi-Fi enabled thermometer. This is a two probe, which is really great for what I'm using it for. I'm actually monitoring the great temp in two different locations, about center where the, the meat's gonna go and more off to the left side. And I'm just wanting to see what the split is. I have my tuna plates in such a manner to where it's a little cooler, actually on the fire side, a little warmer on the hot side. I'm gonna go right in the middle there. All right, it's time to put this meat on the grate. Pull my chef out here a little bit. I'm going to lay these ribs on here a long ways for the time being. Just like that. All right, we're going to close her up. We're going to keep this pit running, like I said, around 250 degrees, no more than 275. And so you know what I'll be using today for smoke wood is cherry wood. A friend of mine gave me a truckload of cherry wood. It's about eight months old, been sitting there seasoning, getting right, and I've got a load of it, so that's what I'm using. Plus it pairs very well with pork. Been going around two hours on the ribs. We're getting ready to take a look. And I've got a sauce here. This is Carolina Q, Eastern North Carolina vinegar sauce. Now this is sent out to me a couple of months ago. I have, meant to do a video by now with it it just i haven't had the opportunity until today but this is going to make a really good mopping sauce it's real thin and it even says on the label that this makes a good mopping sauce it can be used as a glaze barbecue sauce whatever but we're using it as a mopping sauce let's take a look at these ribs all right we're still holding around 250 we're about 260. all right Take a look at these bad boys. Oh yes sir, looking good. We're already starting to get some pull back on the bones. I love a good vinegar sauce. You can definitely smell the vinegar in these. This is going to give it a real good tangy flavor on these ribs. Oh yes sir, that's my alarm telling me that we are un under temperature now. That's because we're wide open. All right, I'm gonna close it back probably every 30 minutes, every 30 to 45 minutes, I'll be putting another coat of this, this mop sauce on here. I do believe our ribs are done. They got a nice bend to them, almost to the verge of breaking, not quite. I've taken a probe and I probed from one end to the other, 
probing very tender. These ribs are done. I'm gonna take them off, wrap them in foil. Just wanna let them rest and cool off to where I can work with them. While I'm letting these ribs cool off a little bit, I wanna show you a really nice pan that I'm gonna be using making this dish with. And for any of you that are into real old vintage type cast iron, you're gonna love this. This is made by the Field Company. This is their 10 inch. I'm gonna to try to show that in the light to where you can really take a good look at that. Made in the US of A. Now take a look at this finish. This is just like the old vintage style. It's lighter weight. It's not heavy like today. Now don't get me wrong, it's got, it's got a lot of heft to it, which cast has got to have that for good heat retention and to prevent hot spots and such as that. But look at that finish. Now this pan has already been pre-seasoned twice with grapeseed oil, not by me, by the factory. And all they recommend when you get it first time only is to use water and just a little bit of soap. I didn't use soap. I just washed it out with some water. I put it on a stove. I heated it up. I let it dry out good. And I will be putting a coat of oil on this, obviously, because I'll be doing a cornbread. But I wanted to show you that. And uh, I'm so impressed by this, this pan, this company, for going back to like the old vintage style. Nobody else is doing that that I know of. And I'm so impressed, I'll become an affiliate. I'll have an affiliate link in the description box. If you'd like to check this pan out, they have a 10 inch, like you see here, they also have an eight inch. And I'm sure there's more things to come. Now, if you'll take a look at this rack, you'll notice it wasn't quite as long as it was. <laughs> That's because my wife and her friend had to have one of these ribs right off the grill, right off the smoker. All I'm doing is going right between the bones you can see there oh yeah see if you can see that nice and juicy can you see all that juice you got a little smoke ring going on there tell you the truth i really hate doing in a way what i'm doing i just soon just bite into these and be done with it man smelling insane but anyway i've got this bowl here and all i'm gonna do is just cut the meat off the bones i'm gonna dice it up until i think i have enough so I'll bring you back here in a few minutes. Now it's time to make a mac and cheese. Now this is one of my favorites. I've done quite a few different mac and cheeses on my channel, but this is one of my most favorites right here. Starting off with one and a half sticks of butter. We're just gonna melt that in. Now into the butter, I've got one cup of all purpose flour going in. We're just creating a real light roux. We're gonna let this go probably around three minutes. Now here, you just wanna slowly add in milk. You can warm your milk up to prevent clumps. I don't worry about it too much. I always end up working the clumps out. Now when all this is said and done, this is probably gonna end up taking around three quarters of a gallon of milk. We've gotta get it back to a boil First, we gotta get it blended in well. Once we get it to a boil, that's when you're really gonna see the thickening taking place. And from there, you just keep adding milk till you get it to the right consistency. All right, so we're looking pretty good here. I'm just about back up to a simmer, and I have just been gradually adding milk as I go. But this is a pretty good looking bechamel sauce. That's about what you want. You want some pourability, and not real thick. Because we're, we're getting ready to thicken it up even more with some cheese. All right, so that's looking good. I'm going to add in eight full ounces of a white sharp cheddar. We're going to melt that in. And by the way, I bought the block cheese and I shredded it myself. Actually, my wife did. Now I have one whole pound of shredded pepper jack. Once again, this was block cheese that my wife shredded. I prefer doing that because the pre-shredded has a starch on it to stop the uh, pieces from sticking to each other. And I just don't like that. I'd rather have it off the block. So we're gonna melt this in. And so you know, I've got a pot of water over here heating up. As soon as it comes to a boil, 
I'm going to add in one pound of elbow macaroni. We're going to cut it down to a simmer, let it go for six minutes. We want the elbows to be al dente, not completely done, because this will continue to cook within the cornbread. Now, if though that wasn't enough, I've got 16 ounces or one pound of softened cream cheese. There again, we're just going to melt this in. All the cheese is in. I like that consistency. It's still piping hot as it cools off a little. Of course, naturally it will thicken. Now, salt is already in the cheeses. I did salt the pasta. The only thing I'm adding to this is some black pepper, cracked black pepper. All right, so the pasta's done. And like I said, you want it al dente. And it's definitely al dente. It's not completely tender. It's right there at it. It's going to finish cooking in the oven. So we're going to spoon on or spoon in some of this cheese sauce without making a huge mess. I would imagine this sauce is actually enough to do two pounds of uh, noodles. So I'm sure I'll be making some more of this here shortly just to put in the refrigerator to have during the week. No way I'm letting all this go to waste. If you want to cut this recipe down on this mac and cheese, you certainly could cut it in half. Every time I make it, which is not very often, I go ahead and make a lot because it will get eaten. Now, all the red meat's going in. I don't know how much it is exactly, but it's a lot more than six to eight ounces. I'm thinking more like 12. Let's see how that looks. We don't want to get it too, too much sauce because it is going in a cornbread. We want it to be able to set up. But by adding that meat, it did require more cheese. I think this is going to do pretty good right here. Alright, so let's get this cornbread put together. We're going to start with six tablespoons of melted butter. I always like doing my dry ingredients in one bowl, my wet, and then incorporate them. Now I've got one and a half cups of buttermilk going in. Two eggs. Gonna give all this a good whisk. First dry ingredient is one cup of cornmeal. This is a white cornmeal. Got one tablespoon of white sugar. Three quarter cup all purpose flour. We got one and a half teaspoon of baking powder. One half teaspoon of baking soda. One quarter teaspoon of salt. Now we're gonna add the wet ingredients into the dry. All this a good mix. All right, I kind of jumped the gun on y'all a little bit. What I've done is I started adding in the mac and cheese that I made in this pot here. I have added roughly, uh, probably two thirds of this. I don't know how much. And as you can see, it blended in with the cornbread mix very well, as I thought it would. And I just kept adding until you see the consistency right here. I think I'm going to hold right there. You want the bread to set up all around this mac and cheese. You don't want to overcrowd it. So I'm thinking this is pretty good. This is strictly, you know, playing by ear here. You're, it's more or less about what you're seeing. I can't give you specific amounts. You'll just have to uh, do like me and just wing it the best you can. But you might be asking yourself, why in the world would you go through all this trouble making a cornbread when you could have your mac and cheese, you could have your cornbread, and you could have your ribs all separate. Well, that's the way we normally do it. But at special things, you know, like football parties, somebody invites you over and wants you to bring a covered dish, I would highly recommend doing like four or five of these because one's not going to last long, I promise you. And once you bite into it with all those flavors exploding all at one time, you'll see why. All right, our skillet is hot. We're going to put it here on this 
towel to kind of protect the board there. And then from here, in goes the cornbread mix with all the mac and cheese. And you can hear that sizzle. Move that out. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good. All right, I'm gonna pop it in the oven. Like I said, it's at 425. We're gonna go somewhere between 20 and 25 minutes. I'll make that determination by looking at the color and doing a toothpick test. In we go. We are done. It took 25 minutes exactly, and I just probed it with a toothpick and as you can see dead center it's coming out super clean this cornbread is done but it's too hot to cut so I'm gonna let it sit here and cool off maybe a good 10-15 minutes we just want it warm not piping hot so we'll be back cornbread is cooled I cut me a little piece I'm not gonna lie I've done had one piece already so I went with a small one here it cooked really nice. It's got nice color here. It's got nice color on the bottom. It's very moist. It's holding together. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Really good textures on this. You got the cornbread texture that we're all used to, but then you got that mac and cheese, all that creaminess, but it's holding together well. That bread really sets up good around the mac and cheese. It's it's exactly what it says it is. It's uh, rib mac and cheese cornbread. That rib meat is what's really standing out to me. It's adding that hint of smokiness. That vinegar sauce is killer on this. I could taste it more before it went into the cornbread. Now it's just a mixture of everything, but really good. The pan did an outstanding job on it. Hope you give this a try. It's, uh, like I said, it's something you might want to try at one of your football parties or somebody asks you to bring something to a party. You might want to load up two or three of these and give it a go. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, smoke your ribs.